Now, the latest ENCA Ipsos poll shows that main political parties uh, shows the main political parties that are likely to lose significant support in the local government elections. While some of the smaller parties will gain some traction, and to tell us more about this and all the other surveys that we've conducted over the last few days is Ipsos SA Director Marie Harris. Thank you for your time this morning, Marie. Um, let's start with the voting in the metros, and this is obviously data that's compiled based on all registered voters. Yes. I found it very interesting that you're seeing a trend that parties actually benefit from voter turnout. The ANC, for example, the data shows, would generally benefit from a medium voter turnout. Yes, that, that is very correct. But the thing is that all parties do not benefit in the same way. Whereas, as you say, a medium voter turnout in Johannesburg, for instance, will benefit the ANC, it will this, you know, not benefit another party, whereas a low voter turnout might benefit another party. So this model is not linear. It has different effects on different parties. And the reason is because we work with people. These are not just numbers. They are really the opinions of people that determine how the um, voter turnout scenarios fall out. Right, and how do the scenarios play in the major metros? Uh, we use Tuane, Johannesburg, um, and, and Nelson Mandela Bay, um, and just to get a sense of how the, uh, the turnout is reflected in those uh, metros. Um, can we talk about Johannesburg first? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Johannesburg, for instance, if we look at all registered voters, uh, the ANC will get 42.7% of the vote. The DA, 21%, and the EFF, 9.8%. And then a party like Action SA, you're talking about smaller parties, is coming through quite strongly in Johannesburg with a 12.4%. But then if we look at the different voter turnout scenarios, for instance, in the low voter turnout scenario, the ANC support will go from 42 to 44.6%. So depending on how many people turn up at the polls tomorrow, that will determine the, the vote. And the, the DA, under a low voter turnout scenario, goes to 25% of the vote in Johannesburg. Um, Action SA, then suddenly in a low voter turnout, gets less votes. It only gets 8.3% of the vote. So the big thing is, if I look at this overall, I think the medium turnout is probably more likely. I don't think so very few people are going to vote, only 27%. I don't think that. I also don't think a high voter turnout is going to happen because in local government elections, the turnout is usually smaller than in national elections. So probably a turnout between the medium and the high. Um, but the Let's, if you look at the medium turnout, then it looks far more possible mm. for Johannesburg. I'm very interested about Swane um, as well. Talk us through those likelihoods that are coming through in the data. In Swane, in the uh, all registered voters, the ANC gets 44%, the DA 13.5%, and the EFF 16.3%. So we see the EFF suddenly becomes under, if all registered voters, just go and vote, then the EFF is the opposition party in Swane. But that might not happen. Mm. It might, but it might also <laughs> not happen. I mean, and then if we look at the different turnout scenarios, the ANC support can go up to almost 49% in Swane. The DA support under a high voter turnout scenario is 136 but then under a low turnout, it's only 112 mm. So again, it will benefit the DA in Swane to get all their voters to the poll to get their, their turnout as high as possible. Mm. So, as I said, this model affects different parties in, in different, different ways. ways. And that's also reflected in the Nelson Mandela Bay region as well. Yes, definitely in Nelson Mandela Bay region. This, by the way, is we only measured um, the trains in three metros, as you know. But in Nelson Mandela Bay, this is the only one of the three where the ANC measures more than 50%, or it's possible mm. to get more mm. than 50%. And it's 50%. quite high, 54.3% in a medium turnout. In the medium turnout, yeah. yes. But it, if it's a low or a high turnout, it might drop it below the 50 and all the years that I've done polling, 
Um, I've seen the, uh, the ANC supporting the country going under 50 percent. But if you start looking at registered voters and people who are going to vote, want to vote, are likely to vote, then usually the support goes above the 50 percent, as we have seen in the 2019 um, national election and in the 2016 local government election. This is the first time that I've seen the ANC consistently measuring below 50 percent and also below 50 percent in the two of the three metros that very, we looked at. Yeah, very, very interesting. Okay, let's move on to October trends because we've got quite a bit to get through, Marie. Um, here we're focusing on party loyalty and uh, changing allegiance. But the first slide shows that you guys did a whole thing around the media or information sources that are used to form an opinion about a political party. And it's very interesting, perhaps unsurprising, that people are turning quite significantly to social media. Yes, people are definitely looking at social media. Therefore, it's not the only thing they look at, which I think is a is a great improvement mm. because if you only look at social media you sometimes get a very skewed view because in a lot of instances social media is like an echo chamber because you talk to the people who feel like you who see the life or see life and political parties like you said um, you usually get a little bit more of a balanced view or a more independent view if you look at other media as well and we see radio and television coming through there as well so I'm very happy about that but social media plays a big role not the biggest role but the third biggest role of the radio and television the information that people get from social media and I think that also says to political parties you need to think outside of the box mm. and communicate with people in different ways and do not irritate people for instance if you pick up your phone and this is this mechanical voice talking to you about um, the election like like I had yesterday, it only made me it's angry. Annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I will definitely not vote for this party. So you see, you also need this very fine line, I think, with social media and other mediums that you use in your communication. Right, let's move on to the next slide there, there the satisfaction with the overall performance of the 2016 a party choice. Uh, the, you've done combined both the first and the third wave. Yes. But this is also very interesting. Party loyalty uh, doesn't always mean that people are going to go and vote for that party on the day they might be looking at the ballot paper and change their mind in the moment yes. that can happen and especially in this election as we have said so many times over the last two weeks this election is different from others we had such a short campaign almost a shrunken campaign and everything had to happen very quickly even our surveys had to happen very quickly but what we see is that they are the staunch party supporters and then there are others that might change or might not change at the moment it looks as if a lot of those might stay away and not go and vote tomorrow um, obviously we want as high as possible a voter turnout because I think that gives a better reflection of what South Africans want but um, the thing is also that you know there were so many stories not only about the ruling party but also about the other political parties of corruption of um, embezzlement of funds of leadership issues that no political party are really in the pound seats at the moment Right, and then what about um, the changing of allegiance? Because that's also quite interesting. Um, a high percentage of those that were surveyed um, in both the first and the third wave indicated that they want to try something new. Yes, it is about about 25 to 30 percent mm. of of people who said that. They. Some of them said, I just want something new. And some of them said, my old party is corrupt. I'm going to try a new thing. And some others said, I'm changing from my old party because I have trust in the other party's leader. So you can see again, there's about six or seven reasons why people might change 
their allegiance in this election as opposed to the last one. Right, we don't have these graphics up yet, but I'm sure you'll be joining us through the day. We're running out of time, but I have to touch on this one, party support over time. If we take a look at the first slide, Marie, um, it doesn't necessarily... I mean, I just want to indicate here that we saw some interesting figures coming through for Action SA um, as well as the EFF um, in the support over the time. So we saw in uh, 20, uh, 20 or, well, rather in 2019, the EFF, interestingly, had about 10.8 percent. That declined quite a bit um, in the uh, 9 to 5, uh, 15th of October to about 8.2, and that's kind of risen again. A, um, a few days after that so people are getting more defined in the direction that they will be taking and I find it very very interesting that Action SA has grown as much as it has um, in this very short period. Mm. Definitely let's look at those two parties you spoke about first of all on this graph that we don't have up yet because it's very new we can see the support for the previous local government election and the previous national election but the the two waves that we've done in the ENCA polls show that old truth that the poll is true for the time when it's done. Things change. Mm. And our first poll was done two weeks ago uh, from the 9th to the 15th of October, measuring the EFF only at 8.2%. Mm. Now, the one that was published on Thursday, that's just finished, the EFF measuring at 10.2%. And again, these are all registered voters that we are talking about. The action is a yes. We have especially spoken about action SA when we spoke about Joburg. Mm. What we see here is that it really makes inroads in Johannesburg, not so much in the other areas, perhaps a little bit in Tswane. But Action SA is probably going to be the so-called kingmaker in the Johannesburg metro. It looks like that from these figures. Um, if they come in at about 10 or 12 percent of the vote, oh, both the DA and the ANC will talk to them very nicely to work <laughs> together with them. Right, and as I mentioned, Marie, you are joining us uh, throughout. Even tomorrow, you and I will engage further. Lots to break down with this data. Very, Absolutely. very interesting stuff that we haven't even touched on yet. And as I've just mentioned, she'll continue to unpack this data with us. Uh, that's Marie Harris, who's the director for Ipsos South Africa, uh, engaging us on surveys that have been conducted over the last few weeks.